So I liken systems to something called alchemy. I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with the, the term alchemy, but alchemy is an ancient technique done by these mysterious sort of magician type people. They would turn base metal into gold. So you want to know anybody who can do alchemy, of course, right? And I look at systems as a form of alchemy. Being able to turn an ordinary business or a business that's perhaps not anywhere near where you want it to be and pushing it into the gold area. So in this session, what I'm going to do is I call problems fire. So I'm going to help you guys identify where your fires are. I'm then going to show you how I help Dave work out those fixes. And then from there, I'm going to explain how the documentation and implementation of systems were those fixes. That was the alchemy. And then um, I'm going to go through uh, how to get started. So like I said, there's been a lot of really great ideas in this session or in the workshop so far. But one of the big problems, I think, with any entrepreneur, or any business owner is, what do you do first? Where do you start right now? There's too many things I need to do. I'm going to help you identify how to do that. And at the very end, there'll be a little Q&A session. We'll talk about Dave. We'll ask him to leave the room, and we'll all be good. <laughs> OK. So before I get started, I think it's really important for you guys to know, like Dave <clears throat> said, how I got to the way I am now. How, how, how did I become such a, such a systems person? And I know it's been mentioned a couple of times so far that systems are sexy. I really think they are. And I'd really like to demonstrate to you guys why I actually think they're sexy. So I'm going to explain a little bit about me first. So <laughs> I've been a very creative mind since I was young. As soon as I could pick up a pencil, I was writing down stories and telling stories. That progressed through my high school career. Simultaneously in high school, I published a music magazine. I loved rock and roll. I liked guys in tight pants. And <laughs> I liked to write about it. And I realized very quickly, publishing a magazine, that was my first little business, that I actually had to create a way of working that would allow me to be able to go to school and publish this magazine. I became so obsessed with trying to work this out that I actually ended up working, uh, graduating high school a full six months earlier than my peers. They were all studying final exams while I was off chasing rock bands. So that led to my business mind. So I finished high school, went on to actually get an academic scholarship, scholarship to university. Simultaneously, I ended up opening up a beauty salon. My creativeness sort of turned into business-mindedness, if that's a word. And I had to keep up my academic scholarship as well as operate a business. And then to do that, I had to become very organized. But having an organized mind might sound really boring, but it enables you to start thinking about things and how to complete projects that you start. So back before phones were smart, I had this thing called a day runner. Anyone know what a day runner is? Yay! <laughs> Pieces of paper and a little book and a pen? Yeah? No? No. OK. Um, I lived by my day runner. And my day runner, I used to actually work out my uni schedule, when my tests were, when my, my appointments were, when I had to open the shop. I had all these different things. And little did I know, I started to put little systems into place back then in order to actually get the most efficiency out of my day. So from there, my music magazine, which was distributed worldwide, it actually got picked up by a place called Tower Records. Anybody that's familiar with the United States might know what Tower Records was. It was distributed on the east coast of Tower Records. But through my magazine, I met my husband. He is a very business-minded musician. And uh, when we first met, I was publishing the magazine. So it was through that. We met in 1999, got married, and I moved to Australia. He ended up working full time as a night manager at a supermarket in South Yarra called IGA, Richie's Paran. <laughs> All the memories. <laughs> and I ended up doing a few different jobs, but I ended up at the National Australia Bank in their corporate card section. And I actually ended up implementing quite a lot of systems for them um, in that particular area as well. But we were doing 95, 95, 95. And I'm sure all of you have heard of Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Sean was a big proponent of that book. And he goes, we've got to get out of the rat race. We've got to get out of it. We're just working for everybody else, making them rich. We need to get out of it. So we said, OK, let's have this great idea. Let's open a business. Oh my god. We didn't get out of the rat race. We ended up working 24-7. 
So what we did, though, was we worked full time. And we hired someone from the very first day that we opened to run the store, which is Stars and Stripes, you see here, on Bridge Road in Richmond. <coughs> music, fashion, retail inspired. Uh, music, fashion, inspired retail, sorry. <laughs> and um, we put staff in it from day dot. So I was working at the bank, Sean was working at the supermarket, and we had staff running it. And on the seventh day, on the, on the Sunday, we used to come in and work and then tidy things up and everything. Little did we realize, we thought that was how you got to freedom. You know, Robert Kiyosaki goes, you have to move from this corner to that corner. So we're like, okay, we're going from you know, self-employed to business owner. And we were constantly working. We're always answering phone calls to the staff. Oh, someone complained. Oh, the computer froze up. Oh my God, what am I gonna do? And we didn't realize that we actually bought ourselves a, an extra job. So Sean and I sat down and we said, this is ridiculous. This I'm sure isn't what Robert Kiyosaki meant when he said, get out of the rat race. So we sat down and we thought, okay, what do they keep asking? What do they keep asking? All right, let's, let's do a manual. And let's do a manual so detailed that anyone that's slightly mobile and can read can run this shop. Put the key in the door, open it, turn the lights on, count up the till. It was really, really detailed how to display clothing, how to deal with something in an emergency situation. We found the more systems that we put into place, the more we documented in that manual, the less and less phone calls. And I remember one time, it was like three or four days had gone by and we hadn't heard anything. We're like, oh my God, it's on fire. Something must have happened. We haven't heard. We rang, no, no, everything's good. Everything's fine. And we thought, oh, aha, this is what you do. You automate it. You document it and you let your staff run it. We, we, were, we were shocked. We had actually created that aha moment. Was that first little touch of alchemy for me. Then Dave happened. <laughs> so a few years later, we had run Stars and Stripes as operating really well, and we got this idea, Sean and I were like, okay, how can we take this edgy music store, how can we take this success, and how can we roll it out? Let's go into shopping malls, and let's make it a little bit more family friendly. Sean had the vision, and he had some business now, so I had the systems and the training experience, but we really needed somebody who had online experience and somebody who had business negotiating and networking skills. Sean and I weren't the kind of people that liked to go out at that stage and, and do a lot of negotiations and networking. And through the crazy crew at the IGA supermarket, as displayed here, Dave knew Sean. Dave knew, I mean, Sean knew that Dave was a go-getter. He knew through working and seeing his personality, you know, this guy is really good. He, he's, he's the type of dude that when he puts his mind to something, he's going to achieve it. So we thought, hey, Dave, come into the piece. And Dave's skills rounded out Planet 13, which we opened in 2004. So this was the Greensboro store. Where's Melissa? Hidden amongst all the dark clothing there. So from the very first day of Planet 13, we launched it with a full manual. The entire purpose, the same as Stars and Stripes, was to never work in it. It was to always work on it. Now, I think if I go back, I don't know why I'm pointing at the screen. It's like I've got it's over here. Um, this was our head office. So we actually worked in a head office uh, capacity. So we never planned on working in the business. It was always on the business. So we launched it fully loaded with a manual, fully loaded with training. And Dave, Sean, and I spent probably the first month, or was it a couple months? We worked all the hours, because we wanted to know where these systems were gonna go wrong, what possible hiccups were gonna happen. And those were long days. I remember our, we used to go get our feet massaged at the massage place down, the, <laughs> down a couple of levels. So I'll just quickly show you what we launched it with. And this looks like a plastic binder. You're right. Looks like a bunch of pages. You are correct. But what you might not realize is this is actually freedom for a business owner. When you document, systematize, train, and put something like this into your business, you are not tied to it anymore. We were able to, after those first couple of months of working in Planet 13, we were able to actually leave. It ran. We worked in our head office. We did other ventures. We did other little experiments. We went off and did different things, knowing that every single day that store was going to just open and shut, open and shut, do its thing. 
What was amazing is after Planet 13 opened, it wasn't very long that we started getting a really amazing response from people like, wow, this is a really cool store. It really operates well. We've got great customer service. And as a side note, I think you would all probably realize that getting really good customer service is not a, as common as it used to be. And maybe perhaps it's because we've worked more in an online capacity. But when you have very well-trained staff who know what the processes are, who are confident in what they're doing, good customer service follows. It's because they're sure. They know what they're going to say if a customer asks them a question. And if they don't know the answer, they know where to go to get it. That, that's the basis to me. The crux of good customer service is confidence. So anyway, I digress. So with Planet 13, what ended up happening is people came to us and said, this is a fantastic idea. How can I get one? And Sean, Dave, and I remember we were like, ooh. People want to buy this. Wow, that manual's really good, <laughs> you know? And so Dave, with his, um, his business and negotiating skills, started going out and trying to find out how can we sell this thing to people? And everyone's familiar with franchising and the franchising models. So we went out and met some different franchising companies. And we met with one in particular. And we sat down, brought all the manuals, all the documentation. And they were huffing and puffing and telling us about all the important elements that you must document and you must do this. And, and there was something about a $60,000 price tag to actually franchise. And we were a little bit blown away by that because we were like, wow. But then the guy goes, but you've got 20 grand of it right here. You can imagine how excited that made us feel. We've got 20 grand of it. So we had this meeting. We ended up leaving from it. I remember when we left, we were <coughs> like, you know, after that whole meeting, Really, this was it. Bar the, bar the legals. You have to get legal paperwork done and done properly. And now you have to go see. I don't ex expect everyone to do DIY legal on that. <laughs> that would be kind of scary. Um, but with that, we realized we effectively, through just systematizing, automating our process by documenting training, getting those things done, we actually created a franchise model. And we sold them on that manual. And they worked.